Hello men and women of science, this is Mr. Cochran here with the last video on stoichiometry and this last video is going to cover calculations involving limiting and excess reactants in chemical reactions. Uh, you may also hear limiting and excess reagents, reactants and reagents are used interchangeably in chemistry and so here we go. All stoichiometry, including limiting reactant problems, start with the bounced equation. And the one we'll use for examples in limiting reactant is the single replacement reaction between hydrochloric acid and aluminum. You can see that hydrogen and chlorine are here in multiples of 2 and 3, but a 1 to 1 ratio on the left. 2 and 3 both go into 6, so we can fix that with a coefficient of 6 there. 3 in front of hydrogen and 2 in front of aluminum chloride. So we need to put a 2 in front of aluminum, and we have our bounced equation. And those coefficients give us the relative amounts of each substance for the reaction in moles. And as we're talking about limiting reactant, it's important to review what are the reactants in this reaction. Those are the things on the left. So limiting reactant would be either hydrochloric acid or aluminum in this case. The products are the things on the right, and limiting reactants limit products as we're about to find out. And so to recognize a limiting reactant problem, you'll know two different amounts of the reactants to start with. You're going to do stoichiometry to convert those reactants into the same product to figure out how much they can form. And then based on the amount they form, uh, you'll determine which reactant limits the product and which reactant you're going to have left over or excess. So here we go. The limiting reactant is the one that limits how much product can form, and that means that all of that reactant will be used up in the reaction as it forms product. The excess reactant, as I said, is the one that will not be used up. There's going to be more present than needed to react with your limiting reactant, and that also means there will be some left over. So let's try a limiting reactant problem and, and see how we go about solving these. To start with, we're going to work with 10 grams of aluminum and 12 grams of hydrochloric acid, and the question is, how many grams of hydrogen gas will form, and what is the limiting reactant? We'll start with our balanced chemical equation bouncing in there, and you'll notice again, this is limiting reactant because it tells us both amounts of aluminum and hydrochloric acid are two reactants. So when you see that, you're going to key right into that is a limiting reactant problem. And so we're looking for which of these things, the hydrochloric acid or the aluminum, limit the amount of product we can make. And since it asks about hydrogen gas, that's the product we're going to focus on here. So we'll make this problem smaller, scoot the equation up so we have room to work. And again, here's our two starting amounts of reactants. What we're going to do is convert each to grams of hydrogen so that we can answer that first question. So starting with 10 grams of aluminum, we convert it to moles so we can use our mole ratio of hydrogen to aluminum. Moles of aluminum factor out, and since they want the answer in grams, we're going to convert moles of hydrogen to grams of hydrogen. And we crunch these numbers and we'll find that 10 grams of aluminum is capable of producing 1.12 grams of hydrogen. So now we're going to figure out how many grams of hydrogen that 12 grams of hydrochloric acid will form in similar steps, converting grams to moles, uh, converting moles of hydrochloric acid to moles of, of hydrogen, and then converting moles of hydrogen to grams of hydrogen using molar mass of hydrogen. And we'll find that 12 grams of hydrochloric acid is capable of only producing 0.332 grams of hydrogen. So the hydrochloric acid is limiting how much product we can make. Once we've made 0.332 grams of hydrogen, we can't make any more. We've run out of hydrochloric acid. That means that we cannot make 1.12 grams of hydrogen. We don't have enough hydrochloric acid to do that. That also means that hydrochloric acid is the limiting reactant. And likewise, that means that we have more aluminum than we can use. So aluminum is our excess reactant. So we've answered both questions. Uh, hydrochloric acid is the limiting reactant, and it can produce 0.332 grams of hydrogen gas. The next question might become, how many grams of aluminum are left over? Remember, aluminum is our excess reactant. So the question we have to answer is, how many grams of aluminum are used up? And so remember that aluminum is reacting with hydrochloric acid, so we're going to calculate how many grams of aluminum would uh, react with 12 grams of hydrochloric acid. So we're going to do one more stoic problem here, grams of hydrochloric acid to grams of aluminum. Uh, we convert grams of hydrochloric acid to moles using the molar mass, convert moles of hydrochloric acid to moles of aluminum using the mole ratio, 
and then we convert moles of aluminum to grams of aluminum using the molar mass of aluminum and find that 2.96 grams of aluminum are used up. So if we are given 10 grams of aluminum, then 2.96 are used. All we need to do is find the difference between the amount we had to start with and how much reacts with hydrochloric acid. And if we round to one decimal, uh, because we're subtracting here, you'll find that 7.0 grams of aluminum are in excess. So to solve a limiting reactant problem, you're going to start with a balanced chemical equation to do your stoic. You're going to convert both reactants to the same product using stoichiometry. So at least two stoichiometry problems to solve here. The reactant that makes less product is the limiting reactant and the lower amount of product that you make is all that we can form. The other reactants remaining are the excess reactants. We'll have more than we can use. And to find out how much is used, you're going to convert your limiting reactant to the excess reactant. And then you're going to subtract that amount from the amount you were given in the problem to find out how much does not get used. And then you circle your answer and celebrate. So here is a celebration opportunity for you. Uh, you can do the stoichiometry here to figure out uh, the limiting reactant, how many grams of product will form, and how many grams of excess are left over like we just did in the examples. Pause the video, copy down this equation. Uh, you'll be starting with 12.5 grams of fluorine and 35 grams of sodium chloride. So that's two different reactant amounts. That'll tell you that it's a limiting reactant problem. That, and they're asking what is a limiting reactant. That's kind of a dead giveaway there. So pause the video, copy this down, try the problem, start the video in a minute, and the answers will be displayed. If you're not getting the right answers, go back and look at the example, see if you can find where you went wrong, or bring your work in to your teacher and they can pinpoint where you might be having issues. Pause the video now. Okay, here's the answers to the limiting reactant problems. And like I said, if you aren't getting these answers and you don't see the problem in your work, then bring this work in and share it with your teacher and see if they can help you pinpoint your issues. I hope you found this video helpful. This is Mr. Cochran signing off.